Oh, hello, the internet. Old friend, welcome to another The Spit Take. My name is Jack O'Brien. I'm the editor-in-chief of Cracked, and this is DMX reacting to a computer like a time traveler from the Great Depression. I don't even know how to use a computer. I don't want to learn Are you computer. lying? Come I'm, on, I'm, you, do you know I'm how like, to, like, Google yourself? No. Do you know how to do it on no, a laptop? No, it's too much. Look at all these things. It's too much stuff. It's look. a toolbar. Look, the stuff. Those like, are, like, I, two I windows that are this, open. This is scary. It's scary. So, it's already right. in there. You just start uh, typing in DMX. All right. And, uh, oh, all right, so what do I do? Now you hit enter. All right, all right, okay. Okay. Now that clip in Dan O'Brien's column about Sammy Sosa's Instagram made me realize something. might draw the racist, sportsist, rapist conclusion and assume that those are just isolated incidents of dumb jocks and drug-addled rappers failing to understand technology, but I'm more enlightened than the bigoted straw man version of you that I just created, and I've come to realize something. Mr. Sosa and Doctor of Medicine X had something far more challenging to overcome. They've been famous since before 2007. When I launched Crack.com in 2006, saying, oh, I don't go on the internet, was just like saying, oh, I don't watch TV. Just another way for smug people to let us know, oh, I'm sorry, I suck. Did you not? Yeah, I'm sorry. No, I'm bad people. Lots of people weren't on the internet, and I could talk shit about those people, securing the knowledge that you weren't them. But thanks to Apple and their idiot-proof gadgets, our parents can get around on Facebook without even a single Geek Squad consult. And even those smug people realized they couldn't just sit this whole internet thing out along with everyone else. Everyone except famous people. Celebrities tend to stop evolving at the peak of their fame. It's why Michael Jordan dresses like it's 1999, and Al Pacino characters still shout like the the blind Yosemite Sam who won him an Oscar. Fame and success are to human development what amber and flash freezing are to human decomposition. That DMX video might have made sense in 1997 or maybe even 2002. But that was 2012. That was two years ago. He'd spent the entire decade since the height of his fame being just perfectly preserved behind a wall of money and groupies and the giant mob of shirtless men he apparently keeps company with. What the F you gonna do when we run up on you? Man, when that song asked me what you gonna do when we run up on you, I did not expect the goofy smile. But why would he force himself to sink or swim in the vaguely uncomfortable waters of computer literacy when he could just continue coasting off how dope the hook of that song was? Stop, stop. If you don't think he's acutely aware of that, and I see the music, and in the middle of it, it'll stop. And that's why I love DMX. He threw himself into that interview like he was auditioning for an SNL sketch in which DMX is scared of technology. Let's compare that clip with this one. I've been talking to the other actors about social media. In which Julia Roberts is asked about social media. You've chosen to not be a part of that. Well, I haven't chosen to not no. be a part of it. And immediately develops a rash. You don't have a Twitter, do you? No. No. <laughs> no. No. Do, do you ever feel the need to like put your word out there and like, oh, I'm tired of people saying this and that and it's not right and do you ever feel that that could be a... Release? But who am I talking to? I don't know. Sure. I don't know who most of my Twitter followers are and she'd have millions. But then... I don't know. See, that's the thing I don't yeah. get. It's like screaming into the wind. Yeah, your problem would not be shouting into the wind, more shouting into a microphone connected to millions of people across the globe who are paying way too much attention to what you're saying and probably masturbating to, you legitimately have no idea how the internet works, huh? See, that's the thing I don't yeah. get. But at least she knows how to hold a smartphone. Ethan Hawke holds an iPhone like he's a town crier making an official decree. Ethan Hawke seems like a guy who wasn't supposed to be a movie star, but he slipped through the cracks and everyone was just like, Okay. I like to imagine he reads every text message like that. Hear ye, hear ye. Steven Dorff is running late. But hey, we're just shooting pretty fish in an expectedly stupid barrel, right? It's not famous people's job to understand technology. But there are some pretty surprising famous people who seem to think it's their job to misunderstand it. Sammy Sosa, I see your Pinterest, and I raise you Martha Stewart on Twitter and Instagram, just everything. You've been tweeting out pictures of your meals. This was a, a soup of some, an orange That's onion That's a delicious soup. onion soup. Martha Stewart's a professional perfectionist. She's ruthlessly targeted and been awesome at more jobs than automation. Model, 
stockbroker. Yes, stocks got her in some trouble, but she did her time like a boss, came out like that guy in that Outcast song who just put a bunch of people in my ambulance and ripped off his shirt and shouted, now who else wanna f with Hollywood cult? Made her stronger. Sorry, where were we? Caterer, cookbook writer, publisher, television, she's good at everything. So it's borderline nonsensical to see that her social media persona is just sloppier than a grease stained Dorito dusted t-shirt. Eventually you start to think that maybe she just wants someone to talk to. As awkward and insane as Martha's tweets are, that mishmash of words and demands are nothing compared to her ability to make delicious sounding food photograph like a shit sandwich. Is that lettuce covered in gravy? Okay, that's definitely a bone marrow soup topped with dish soap, I think. I'm gonna guess the charred remains of all who dared cross Martha in her 70 year rise to the top. And yeah, that's just a dump on a plate. Do we even know who is this 4chan it, person or website? He may or, uh, he may have been just a system administrator who knew his way around and how to hack things. Now I know it's a stretch to call CNN tech analyst Brett Larson famous and it's not at all clear that he was even on TV before 2007 since his clearly self-edited Wikipedia page lists his date of birth as March 8th. No year, Brett? Is that just in case strangers wanna send you a birthday present? But that clip belongs in this episode because it illustrates the closed circuit of self-reinforcing stupidity that makes every other clip possible. That conversation could only happen between two people who are trying to bluff their way into fame. If Brett had said any of those words to anyone else in that newsroom or just out on the streets, they would have laughed their ass off and then they would have told him the truth. That 4chan is an escaped lunatic with a hook for a hand and we traced the hack to inside your house. The 4chan is inside your house, Brett, run! Hey, speaking of famous-ish people whose interns are probably laughing their ass off somewhere off camera. We're really puzzled. Uh, here at Gingrich Productions, we've spent weeks trying to figure out what do you call this? A smartphone. Wait, you guys spent weeks trying to figure that out? Are you trapped somewhere, Newt? You probably think it's a cell phone. And if I say to audiences, how many of you have a cell phone that takes a picture, 97% of the hands go up. Okay, so weird question to ask an audience at a political event, and also weirdly specific statistic that suggests you're making them keep their hands up while you're counting them. But think about it. If it's taking pictures, it's not a cell phone. If it has um, a McDonald's app to tell you where McDonald's is from, based on your GPS location, that's not a cell phone. If you can get Wikipedia or go to Google, that's not a cell phone. If you can watch YouTube, that's not a cell phone. Or Netflix, think about it. I love the fact that Newt thinks there's an app that just tells you where your closest McDonald's is. I also love the adorable way he pronounces Wikipedia. Wikipedia. But mostly, I'm just impressed that he manages to give an entire speech that he believes to be super profound based on the premise that he just didn't know there was such a word as smartphone. Go ahead, you can skip around. It's three minutes straight about how cell phone is not the right word for this amazing device that it's about time someone came up with a name for. We've been here before. Um, when we first developed the automobile, it was called the horseless carriage. I've been calling it a handheld computer, but I decided that really was misleading because, you know, while it has the computing power of a 2003 laptop, its real power is not internal computation. Its real power is networking. It's connected to the entire world of information and the entire world of communications. It's almost like a computing pocket. Well, it's better than yours. This can be, at one level, a great health device that allows you to constantly monitor yourself. At another level, it's a great learning device replacing every textbook in the world. Yeah, we, we got it, Newt. We know. At yet another level, it can be a very productive device for getting work done wherever you happen to be. It's like he thinks he's the only person they told what his iPhone could do, and he's like so impressed that he's thinking about making it his entire campaign platform. Although, privileged white guys thinking they discovered something millions of people clearly already knew about while sucking at naming that clearly already named thing is one of the oldest American traditions. Roll sound. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video you presumably watched, unless you just skipped to the end to watch the end plates like I do, because I really just super love the end plates. So if you're like me and you just watch the end plates, welcome to yet another amazing cracked YouTube. Please subscribe to our channel, End Plate. All right, it seems like we're coming to the end of the end plate, but I hope you enjoyed this episode of Cracked End Plates. <laughs>